everybody. Are you ready to play? Let's do it. Welcome. One more time around. Get yourself in tune. Hey everybody, welcome to another live stream session. I'm totally pumped and excited to be with you on this Sunday for another live stream lesson with me, Stu and Ukulele Zen. How are you doing out there? I see there are a bunch of people already in the room from England, from Germany, from across North America, Canada, uh, the United States. Where are you from? How are you feeling? And are you ready to get funky? Because we're going to play Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band today. This lesson is going to be a good one. I'm going to teach you, well, we'll get into some funky strumming. I'm going to roadmap out the lick, you know, the famous lick and also the trumpet melody. We'll also sing and strum this really, really fun song. So welcome to this lesson all about Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Thank you for joining me. Let me know where you're at in the chat down below. If you're watching this live, thank you for joining me. You can watch this anytime as a replay. There's going to be a lot of goodies I'm sharing with you in this lesson, so you may want to watch it again. You can, of course, watch these over and over again. Thank you very much for joining me. Let's say hi to a few people. And then we're going to get right into the lesson. There will be timestamps down below so you can navigate through the different sections of this video. Let's say hello. We got Michael in the house from Snowy Cold, Portola, California. We got some folks. I saw Liverpool flew, fly by. Montreal, Quebec. Trey Romano's in the house. How you doing, Trey? We've got a lot of sweet folks in the house. Michelle is here from Paris. So, uh, so yeah, we're going to get into the Beatles today. And uh, this is, of course, such a classic song, such a, a historic album. I noticed earlier in the chat, somebody mentioned that they owned this on vinyl when it first came out. That's super cool. I wonder if you still have that record. If you do, uh, what a treat. What a, what a little piece of history. You know, this song, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, is only, you know, on the record, it's just over two minutes long. So, you know, why spend an entire lesson on just one song? And that's, the reason is, is that we're going to extract a lot from this tune. I'm going to show you a couple of cool tricks that you can add to your dominant seventh chords. We'll, of course, like I said, learn the lick and uh, sing the song. It's all on the song sheet. So if you haven't downloaded it, go get it right now. There's a link in the description down below. And let's jump into the lesson real quick. Before we do, I wanted to let you know that tickets are still on sale for my upcoming fingerstyle ukulele class. Early bird price is going to end in one week. So if you're interested in coming, there is a link down below. Hope you can join me. I have a whole lot of great stuff planned for, planned for you. We're going to learn so much. You're going to get a replay video, special footage. I'm preparing a concert. It's really jam-packed with a lot of learning and a lot of fun finger style learning and playing. So check the links down below if you want to join me. It's going to be happening on Sunday, March 21st. That Sunday, I won't be here live on YouTube. I will be there okay offering the class hope you can join me let me know if the sounds good let me know how you are doing and if you want to join me for this class please check the links down below um, how about we say hi to just a few more people and then let's get into this we've got Austin Texas in the house Kyla thank you so much for that super chat that's so sweet of you yeah I didn't mention if you're interested in supporting this broadcast there are links down below you can uh, offer a donation at the links down below a super chats of course appreciated and there's also a discount code down there if you'd like to pick up one of my cds a t-shirt yada 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 huge thanks to all the patrons of ukulele zen you are receiving a, a 10 percent coupon for this webinar that i already mentioned all right 
announcements over. Finito. Let's go. Let's jam. So this tune, let's just get into uh, the introduction first. Before we play through the whole song, let's hang with the three chord progression at the top of the song. And then I'm going to take you through the lick and we'll just be able to jam through the tune. The song itself um, only has, you know, seven chords, so it's not very hard to play. The introduction, to make this uh, accessible and easy for everybody, let's just slow it down and play a simple strum. Then we're gonna get funky and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you all kinds of cool, more advanced stuff. But what we have here is, a two a three four a seven two so get ready to jam one two three four you ready two let's do it a seven da 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 c seven double da ba ba bubble da ba do it again a seven ba ba da da Bubble da ba ba, bubble da ba. Two more times. A7. Just keep your strum nice and simple at first. Bubble da da da. Da 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 da. Double da ba ba, bubble da ba. It was 20 years ago today. All right, then we're going to get into it. <laughs> so what are we doing there? Well, we're playing three chords, and we just did it in a nice, mellow way. Let's funk it up a little bit, okay? Before we get into this more involved funk strum, let's feel the funk as a heavy emphasis on beats two and four. And here are a couple of ways you could do it. You know, there's not one way to do it. Good morning, everybody. Glad you're here with me. Feel free to share a link to this video with your friends. If you're playing this, you know, you feel that pulse. A one, two, three, four, A7, two, three, four, A7, two, three. Now C7, two, a three, four, G7, two. So that is the structure as it's going by four beats in each box when you play c7 you can play your bar chord c7 we'll focus on that in just a moment for now you can just play your open c7 chord whatever's whatever's easy and keeps you in the flow now my friends let's get a little funkier with the rhythm and uh how about we do this one and two So of course we're gonna play the whole tune, but I just wanna share with you this funky strum and what it is really based on. The skeleton of it is an eighth note, one and, and then we are decorating and playing through a, three sets of 16th notes, okay? This is not locked in stone. You just follow your own way of doing this. There are a number of different ways to do it. Thank you. Uh, to Spurgeon Gammon and John Rushman for your super chat. Appreciate that support very much. You are the best. Thank you. When we're doing, what we're doing is we're going, let me demonstrate it first. How about I do it first and then you will copy. I'll play. One and two E and a three E and a four E and a one and two E and a three E and a, come on now. One and two E. Thank you. Now, of course, I'm doing it slower. We will pick up the tempo, but not before we start to decorate it. So let's decorate it first by putting a chuck, okay? A chuck right on beat two and right on beat four. 
other decorations are actually going to be subtracting sounds by muting the strings with our left hand. The chuck is where you swing either these two fingers or the first finger at the strings, whipping it from the wrist, and then muting right afterwards. Okay, that's the chuck. The chuck, although it is a powerful sound, it's a snare drum sound, it is actually very light, right? So when you practice the chuck, make it real light in your hand. Really soft, find that still point right after the chuck. So here, let's do it a little slower. I'll go first. Watch me, here I go. One, A, two, E, and a, three, E, and a, four, E, and a, one, and a, two, E, and a, three, E, and a, four, E, and a. Ready? Two, with me now. One, times excellent so let's keep going of course I'm making this video with the idea that you would watch this again and practice each spot so we can now move progressively through it great question from Grant that fingering is barring at the third fret an alternate fingering for C7, barring at the third fret, middle finger is at the fourth fret of the third string. That's your dominant seventh chord. So now, let's pick it up a little bit. Keep the wrist really loose and strum lightly. Yes, so we keep the chuck as light as we can. Watch me just for a moment. You are gonna get lots of time to play, but watch me right now how when I muffle the strings and I keep a steady stream of eighth note, of 16th notes, it's light. Two, three, four. One and two, E and a three, E and a four, E and a one. Let's try this together. Muffle your strings, just mute them, and see if you can, without even chucking, just bring out that two, three, four. Come on. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. With me now. One, two, three, four. One and two. E and a three. Now with the A7. how we start to bring the chuck and bring the funk into it. Now we don't want to get into too much detail, or maybe we do. But if you can start to feel what's happening here, I'm going one and two and up. Uh, I kind of lay off some of the beats here, letting a few of those up strums ring a little longer. This is up to you. So find your own rhythm. This is what I like to do. I go one and So the finger is still strumming down and up, down and up, but most of it is very light and I can bring out some of those up strums. Let me identify where, where they are, what I did. I went one and two E and a uh, three E and a uh, four E and So there was an accented up, one and two E and a uh, three E and a uh, four E and a. Uh. Write this down, not right now maybe, but if you want to. When you watch this video again, write this down. Keep it on a piece of paper uh, near where you practice and just master one funk strum. You'll see mastering one thing, going deep into one subject will reveal everything else, you know, because you learn how to learn. So let's do this together. And yes, I, pr I swear we're gonna play the song. <laughs> we are just getting into the funky strum because this tune, you know, the Beatles 
this was kind of the beginning of funk rock in my mind is this heavy groove on the song and you can bring it out in your ukulele with this kind of strum so we're going down up chunk up 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 chunk try to forget about everything else except these two heavy strums the chunk and these three ups and that chunk and just let the other stuff fall into place all right let's do it and let's keep the chord progression going are you ready one two three four c7 One more time, come on. Ready for the riff. All right, having fun with my looper pedal. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I'm gonna keep on going with the lesson, but I wanna answer some questions. There's some really good ones coming in. One of them is about the chuck. How long will it take? Damien asked, how long will it take to chuck not very long and I have a video on my channel all about how to chuck so check the home page of my channel just click on this little icon below this video or any of my videos visit the home page click on the videos tab and look up the chuck you'll find it it's an old video I made it a long time ago with a little flip phone the chuck would you like a two a one two minute lesson in it it's not as hard as you think here we go strum and then mute I'm gonna mute with this part of the hand ready strum mute strum mute sometimes when I chuck I use these two fingers it's like they're tied together and whip with the wrist strum strum mute strum mute thank you Sean that's so sweet of you to say I appreciate that Sean now bring the mute a little closer to the strum strum mute strum mute strum mute so it is whipping the strings with a little more force but it's not you're not trying to break your strings so it's a little more force but not too much strum mute strum mute so now bring the mute right behind the strum And now bring the mute so close to the strum that it's almost happening at the same exact time. And that's how you get the chuck. So I strum and then boom, right away I mute. And that could happen with this finger too. Strum and mute. So that's how you learn to chuck in one minute. But Damien and everybody else out there, please let me share something important with you from my experience of learning a lot of different things on a lot of different instruments don't do it 10 times in a row like this you'll hurt your hand you might break a nail you might cut your hand on the frets or something do it once line up a shot try to nail one bullseye and then take your hand off and then do it again you're actually saving time when you do this so come on see if you can get a consistent sound in your chuck you strum and then chuck strum and then chuck 
See how I stopped afterwards? So that's really important for any learning process to take in what you're doing. Yeah, so you get this contrast between the strum and the chuck. Is that clear? Let me know if that cleared up things for everybody because chucking is a much more advanced thing. It's time to learn the riff and then we're gonna jam the tune. Um, let me know if, uh, if you're having a good time, please, by clicking the like button. Appreciate that so much. I hope that you are enjoying these uh, live streams each and every week. Uh, I love meeting with you. Thank you so much. Please subscribe to the channel. Give this video a like. And if you want to join me for a really good time, if you're enjoying the way I teach, then you are going to love the fingerstyle workshop that I've planned for you. Sunday, March 21st, you don't have to tune in live. It's great if you can. Tickets are still available, but you'll be able to watch it anytime as a replay. You're going to get a lot of bonus footage, a concert. There's a lot of goodies waiting for you with your tickets, so please check that out. The early bird price ends next Monday, the 15th, so next Sunday is the end of that. I hope you can join me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Martin, for your support in the form of a super chat. You're the man. Thank you. All right, let's get into the riff. This riff, and by the way, if you are a patron of Ukulele Zen, you received a little bonus lesson uh, yesterday that went into some detail of this. We're going to get into some detail right now. Look at this riff. Do, 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 do. Now, that is going to be drawn out on the fretboard in a moment. Start with your middle finger at the fourth fret. Then play your first finger, third fret. Ring finger, fifth fret. And try to leave that first finger down. Okay, so it's three notes. Now, when you play that note at the fifth fret, you can do what George Harrison did and, and add some vibrato, and I'm going to teach you that in a moment. Or you can double the note by letting the open string ring. And that's why it says five and O. Oh. All right. Now, if you don't have the song sheet, go get it because it's in the chat. It's uh, not in the chat. It's in the, um, the video description down below. Go get it. Download it. Thank you, Dogmar. That's so sweet. Satnam. Wishing you all the best. So, this riff. Nice if you can write uh, diagrams out. You know, little, little road maps. You get a triangular shape. Bo do 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 Boo do do do. All right, let's do this a few times, and I'm going to teach you the George Harrison vibrato. The vibrato is with all three fingers on the string, you're going to pull it down to the floor a little bit and then release it. Okay, so you pull it to kind of bend the string and then you release. Do it again. Now do it faster. All right, you might put your string out of tune. It's cool. Go tune up again. This is a good way to stretch your strings out as well. Totally optional, but if you want to get that electric guitar sound that's on the, on the record, you can do that, okay? There's another trick that I'll show you later, but right now... Or alternatively, you could just play the fifth fret in the open string and you get that doubled sound. Yeah. And you don't have to do anything. You could just go totally cool. All right. So that's vibrato, a very quick lesson in vibrato. Thank you, Judith. That's so sweet of you to offer some support in the form of a super chat. I really appreciate that. Now, vibrato is a whole topic that we could get into, and we do in my, um, my blues class I did a few months ago. Make sure that you don't squeeze the thumb to, and the wrist. It's all in the finger. And there are many ways to do vibrato. But on this string, pulling it down, it's 
this motion. So you find it yourself. So let's try those three notes. Again. You want to try it with me? One, two, three, four, one, two. One, two. One. All right, then there's the rest of it. I appreciate that, Jennifer. That's very sweet of you to offer that feedback and your super chat support. I am trying to, with these lessons, if you haven't picked up on it, do something a little different than just going song to song to song, which is great, and I love jamming songs, but I, I think it's valuable to go into just one thing, dig what deep well, and learn more. So that's the first part of the riff. The next part of the riff is based on the same exact shape. You go do, 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 and then the rest we're gonna do with, we're gonna write it out with blue ink. You're gonna move up here to the first string, and right here, use your ring finger, okay, number three for the ring finger, because that ring finger has to hop all the way back here. And then you're gonna play this note, and then look, it's another triangle. Another triangle. All right. Patrons, you have a whole like 16 or so minute video that takes you through this. And now you have this live stream and you can watch this again and again. Now, when you're playing, watch how I use my thumb to pick. And my thumb sweeps through to the next string. And my fingers stay down. You know, that's a helpful thing when playing lead playing. You don't want the fingers flying around like this. They should be settled and stable. The more you relax onto the fretboard, the more they just st have more stability. So this is the roadmap, and in a moment we're gonna go back to the song sheet, and I swear we're gonna play the song. One more time. Now that ring finger hops all the way up there and I took my first finger with me. And now that middle finger is forming the point of the triangle, which is so convenient because the next chord is G7. Pretty cool. So, I hope that this is helpful and um, maybe even mind-blowing. Let's play the whole thing, nice and slow. I'm gonna bring up the, um, the tablature. You can write these, uh, you know, write out these roadmaps yourself. Very, very helpful thing to do. Thank you, Gary. Oh my gosh, thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Catherine, for the super chat. And I appreciate you all hanging with me. It's very, very sweet of you to be here. Hope you enjoy the channel and, uh, and what I have to offer here. So we have this song sheet here. This is an example of the kind of song sheet and lesson material that you get at Patreon, but also with my online workshops, as I mentioned, the fingerstyle one. And let's just play this. One, oh, it starts on beat three. One, two, one, two, then. Yeah. Now, do not worry if it's hard for you to do that. You can slow it down. Very meditative experience. And not for nothing, make it your own rhythm, make up your own phrasing, and you have a wonderful melodic passage. So that way you can practice the motions and make up your own music at the same time. All right, let's play. One, we'll do it nice and slow. One, two, three, four. 
One, two, three, four, A7. A7. C7. You can hold down the chords with me. A7. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. C7. Do bo do bum 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 bo dum bum. Do 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 bum. Bo do do bum. Bo do bum 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 bo dum bum. Practice it. All right, so that's a good amount of time spent on the intro. Appreciate you hanging, and I hope that you don't mind if I go into some depth. That's um, really one of the best ways to learn music, go deep into one thing at a time. Now, let's just play the tune and have a good time. We'll briefly go over the trumpet melody that shows up, and uh, we may not go into take quite as much time as we did with the intro, but let's just play. All right, are you ready? Let's do a slow jam. And then we can pick it up a little faster. Strum any strum you want to strum. Intro, two, three, four, A7. C7. Let's sing, here we go. It was 20 years ago today. Sergeant Pepper taught the band to play. He'd been going at and out of style. But the guaranteed to raise a smile. So may I introduce to you the act you've known for all these years. Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Trumpet soul boom. Bum 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 D seven bum 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 bum. With Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, we hope you will enjoy the show. Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band Sit back and let the evening go Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band It's wonderful to be here it's certainly a thrill You're such a lovely audience We'd like to take you home with us we love to take you home I don't really want to stop the show But I thought you might like to know That the singer's gonna sing a song And it wants you all to sing along So may I introduce to you the one and only Billy Shears, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Arts Club Band, C Major. Billy Shears. And then it moves on to the second track. <laughs> Uh, thank you everybody for jamming. We're going to do this several times. Let me know how you're feeling in the chat down below. Thank you everybody for hanging. I am going to do a quick edit on that, um, the view, so you can see just a little more of the bottom of the page. 
How are you feeling, folks? I hope you are digging this. I am having a good time being with you. So, um, there we go. So, it's a funky strum, but you don't have to strum it funky if that's not what you want to do. No sweat. Uh, we will take some questions because I want to make sure that uh, this time is valuable for you. So let me know in the chat if you have any questions about anything. Who is Billy Shears? Yeah, Beatle Maniacs out there. Anybody know? Is Was Billy Shears a, a childhood friend of, of John, George, and Paul? You know, who was Billy Shears? Maybe he was a, a fictional character in the story of Sergeant Pepper. Cool. Michael's doing good. Thank you. So let's talk just briefly before we're going to get right back into jamming, but I want to share with you something about the chord chart. You know, there's two C7s. You can play this one or you can play the one here at the third fret. It all it's up to you which one you want to use. But there are some times when I think it's nice to use one over the other. So right up here at the very beginning, Let's strum it just a really open, long strumming, just let them ring so we can focus on the left hand change. It was 20 years ago today. Right here, I like to go up to the third fret. It just lifts the chord voicing up. Taught the band to play. Now that doesn't mean it's wrong or bad at all. It is a go today to do this. Sergeant Pepper taught the band to play. Go for it. I did this, and I'm sharing this with you to explain if you're, maybe you're new to playing uke and you're wondering why is he playing the C7 here sometimes and why is he playing it here sometimes. It's just a, what my ear tells me is nice. Another thing that's really sweet to do with the bar chord form, and it's, it's a simple concept, but it's a very, very tasty thing to do. You take the middle finger off and then you hammer it on a moment after you strum. And if you do it quick. It's a little bluesy, it's just a bluesy way to um, decorate the chord. It was 20 years ago today. Sergeant Pepper taught the band to play. You hear that little? It's very light. So you hold down the chord, take the finger off, and then as soon as you strum, hammer on. All right, this is just detail, little extra special sauce for those of you who want it. Apply the sauce. Totally cool to play it any way you want, of course. Later on in the song, when it gets to the end of the verse, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club, I play this because that's the note and the melody, and it just sounds nice to my ear. Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. All right. So, when we get to this trumpet melody, the lead trumpet line in the bridge of the song. There's actually another trumpet playing. Go listen to the original. You'll hear this couple of different trumpets. They're making a counterpoint. They're dancing around each other, two lines at once. But this is the line that sticks out more in the melody, in the texture, and it's a whole lot easier to play. So I figured we'd learn this one. Let's zoom in on it and we'll just spend a little bit on it, okay? This melody is actually pretty easy to play because it outlines the chord, all right? It starts like this. All right, so over the C7 chord, you just hold down the C7 chord and drag your thumb. Join in with me. Two and three and here we go. And then you pick the first string, excuse me, first fret of the second string. 
So that whole melody there is right under the F chord. Nice, huh? That means you could play the C7 melody and you could approach that first note with a strum of the F chord. I'm just making sure that my thumb doesn't play the first string. And then I strum the entire chord. Let's play these two bars, then we're going to play the other bar. Here we go. One, two, here we go. Beautiful. Watch this uh, again. One more practice time. Watch this video again so you can practice this. This would be really sweet to uh, you know bring into your ukulele clubs. You can have a couple of folks play the lead lines. The other folks would play the chord. Okay. One, two, last time. All right. So you can play that all single notes if you like. Now the next half of the, of the melody, it's the say it begins in the exact same way. It just changes to a D7 chord. So check it out. Same exact beginning. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I misspoke. It isn't exactly the same. It's similar begins on the open second string now that is a nice fingering because it uses the third and the first finger same position last time start on your E string two three four one Now you land on that note with your middle finger. D7 measure. Now I'm adding a little extra in what I just played. I chose to play the full D7 chord with the pinky. And if you're new to ukulele, you might be confused. Well, wait, I thought D7 was played this way. I thought it was played this way. Why is it played this way with the pinky? A lot of different fingerings depending on the situation you're in. If you're more comfortable using a different fingering, go for it, man, please. But this is what I like to do. Let's play from the C7 chord right there, and then we'll keep on going. Two, three, four. And it ends with that bar chord you see that D7 it's the exact same shape we were just talking about here D7 this is a movable bar chord shape all right let us play the entire trumpet melody and I'm gonna set up a little bit of a loop here with my chord two three four for you to practice Ready to practice. One, two. Here we go. Oh, yeah. want to stop the show and then you would keep on going all right so we're just adding a little extra detail a little extra sauce to the tune and um, it's these little details that I think are so fun to put on the ukulele because it's of course just great fun to strum the song and to play through things just the chords but if we can just put a few bells and whistles on an arrangement 
really nice to do, right? Thank you very much for uh, joining me this Sunday. We're going to jam the entire song right now. If you're digging this, I hope that you'll uh, click the like button. Thank you very much. Please subscribe to this channel. If you're interested in supporting this broadcast, uh, you know, there are some links down below. Ways that you can support, there is the super chat feature in the chat bar or a uh, donation down below. So appreciated, not expected, not required, but very much appreciated. Thank you. There's also a discount code down there if you're interested in picking something from my store. Thank you very much to all the patrons of Ukulele Zen for your support. And uh, you get all kinds of extra perks at Patreon. So thank you very much for just joining me and making music with me. It's really an honor to be, to be uh, one of your musical guides. Thank you. Last but not least, if you're digging the way I teach and uh, you'd like to spend some more time with me, check the links down below because the finger style class still has some tickets left. You're going to get a whole lot of extra goodies. It's not just a class. You get a bunch of extra content afterwards. I'm going to be playing a concert. I'm practicing a whole bunch of new stuff and I'm going to be using some electronics and effects and it might get a little wild, but I'm going to be playing a mixture of virtuosic ukulele music, some songs that I like to sing, some of my own songs, and some experimental things that I think you might really dig. So check it out. I've got a lot of fun things to teach you about fingerstyle ukulele. Let's get into the rest of the lesson. Let's jam. Thank you for joining me. This is a funky strum we worked on before. One and chuck up that up, 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 chuck up that guy. Just follow your bliss, whatever you like to play, you do it. We're going to jam the tune a few more times for the next 10 minutes. And any questions I see come in the chat, just go ahead, fire them away, and we'll get to them. When we're finished, there's going to be, like every week, a mindfulness meditation chance for us to cultivate mindfulness awareness of the present moment relaxing releasing stress listening deeply and opening our hearts so i hope that you can join me for the end of the broadcast for our mindfulness meditation there's definitely a big bridge between listening deeply accepting what is going on the way it's going on, and music making. So that's the bridge I like to build. Thank you, Anna Bess, for that super chat. How about we begin with that riff? You can scratch the strings, get yourself in the funky mood. One, two, let's jam. Here we go. Do that again, A7. It was 20 years ago today Sergeant Pepper taught the band to play He was going in and out of style That's a guarantee to raise a smile So may I introduce to you The act you've known for all these years Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band We hope you will enjoy the show Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band Sit back and let the evening go 
Sergeant Pepper's lonely, Sergeant Pepper's lonely, Sergeant Pepper's lonely hearts club band. It's wonderful to be here, it's certainly a thrill. You're such a lovely audience, we love to take you home with us, we love to take you home. I don't really want to stop the show. But I thought you might like to know That the singer's gonna sing a song And it wants you all to sing along So may I introduce to you The one and only Billy Sheer Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Oscar Band Billy Sheer those last three chords, good jamming. I see you out there. Last three chords, it's C, and then a D, and then this whole thing moves up two frets to E. Shears. That's the original key that the Fab Four played it in. Uh, with a little help from my friends is in the key of E. Not the easiest key for ukulele, but not impossible. Definitely not impossible. We can... Maybe learn that someday. We could put it in a more ukulele friendly key. So I see some I see some um, questions coming in. Let's answer them and then we'll jam one more time to apply them. It was 20 minutes ago today. Uncle Stu teaches us to play. Thank you. <laughs> um, John Rushman has a question. Third measure of opening riff, the P, I assume, said pull off. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good question. So pull off and hammer-ons. This is a, a subject that, you know, you could go into this for a while, but the hammer-on gives you not only more speed. Hammer-ons and pull-offs give you the ability to play more notes with fewer pick strokes, but it's an articulation thing. It's the way the note sounds. So what I'm doing in the riff is I'm playing. So I'm picking, I'm picking, and then I'm hammering, and then I pick. You don't have to do that. You could pick each note individually, but listen to the difference. It comes out very um, articulated. Da, 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 da. that little vibrato. When you hammer, it it's a slur. It is a, a way of making the notes sing a little differently. So that's the concept. Now, how do you do it? Well, take your first finger and just, you could mute the strings at first and just practice drumming on the ukulele. So look at your hand and get that point of the ring finger to land. And you can hear it makes a little tick, tick, tick. Do it three times and stop. You definitely don't want to build up a lot of tension with this. And then pick and then hammer. All right, it takes a while because you're... It's, uh, it's, you're developing a really, uh, it's target practice, you know, <laughs> you're trying to hit a very small target with, with your fingertip and it can take a while. So be very patient with this. So see, I picked once. And then I did the same idea here, but in reverse, I pulled off. See, look, one pick. Now, picking and pull-offs and hammer-ons is something I went into in a video at my channel, and I called it speed lick. It was a it was a speed lick in the key of A, but it's not just about learning that lick. It's about the mechanics of pull-offs and hammer-ons. So check that out if you want to get into it. My channel, if you haven't already, hope you'll subscribe to it. Visit the homepage and just search in the videos tab. You can go to the search bar and just look up speed lick. You'll find it there. All right. Lead playing is, there's a lot to it. You know, there's what you're doing with this hand, what you're doing with this hand, where the notes are. 
best to take it slow and um, have a good time with it as you go. You know, above all else, just enjoy yourself. Don't worry about it at all. That's a great question, John. Thank you. Laura Clark asked, does it matter if I'm using on a high G or low G? No, you know, this whole time I've had my low G ukulele sitting next to me and I didn't touch it. Um, I'm a playing on high, I'm a playing on high G right now just because I feel like it. Uh, but um, yeah, play on any any uh, tune you any tuning you want. And use a wah wah if you have one. Um, what's the difference between steel and nylon low G strings? Great question. Um, tone and feel. So strings, people ask often, not just me, ask many players about different string types. It's a personal preference thing. Um, these ones are wound with metal because these are actually jazz guitar strings that I put on. These are two jazz guitar strings and these are two classical nylon strings. I will be making a video soon with a tour of this ukulele and an interview of the 88-year-old luthier who built this. Amazing guy, Brian Griffin, and why it's an entirely different design. There's a link to his website in my description. But um, I, use, I, I use guitar strings for the tone and the feel. Uh, so really, the only answer would be, what's the difference? It's up to you. You know, what do you like? These strings are made of fluorocarbon. They're, it's hard to see them because they're dark, but they're smooth. They have a nice, for me, a nice clean, clean sound on this uke. Every ukulele's got, it's gonna sing a little differently with a different string, you know? So some ukes I have nylon, some strings I have fluorocarbon, some strings I have this wound steel. Some ukes I use different strings for, so. Yada, yada, yada. Um, am I boring you? Thank you for joining me. Um, during the first verse, show us how many beats you apply to each chord when transitioning from G to A7. And during the first, you mean in the introduction, Brian? Do, 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 do. One, two, do, 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 do. Bo, 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 do, 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 do. And you can see this in the licks. When you look at the song sheets, you can see up there that there are bar lines, you know, next to the tablature, okay? As far as the verse goes, it was one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that's two beats each chord. This is in the same key as the original, so go play along with the Beatles, go on. When we're done here, watch another one of my videos, pretty please, and then <laughs> just bring up the Beatles and jam along. I mean, that's one of the greatest ways that you can really improve as a player is playing along with your favorite artists, playing to uh, a drummer that's steady. You can be the fifth Beatle, so go ahead, play along with them. During the singing verse, yeah, so just follow along with the recording and you'll hear the number of beats. Linda and Starlight, thank you so much for um, your super chats and your support. Um, I just freaked you out with that whistle, sorry. <laughs> I'll bring out my other Native American flutes and jaw harps. I have a lot of things that I'm gonna be sharing during the concert. It's gonna be a ukulele concert, but I'm gonna be playing a few other things in the concert that's part of this event. And you'll be able to watch it as a replay. So check the links down below if you wanna get your tickets. I'm making this announcement now because pretty soon we're gonna have our meditation, our mindfulness meditation, and I. I like to end without making any announcements. Any more questions in the chat? Oh, High Point Arts, you're getting a Griffin ukulele. That's awesome. Yeah, you're going to like it. They're a little bigger, but the sound is huge. It's really a really, I love my uke. I love my Griffin uke. It's really one of my favorites ever. Oh, sorry, I will not use the whistle. Um, any more questions? How about we play the tune one more time? Let's get our ukuleles out. It's only a two minute song. We'll jam one more time. And then of course you can play along with the Beatles. Practice these licks. And um, yeah, you'll be richly rewarded.
Joe asked a question about the workshop. Yes, so it is a Zoom webinar. So different than a Zoom meeting, the Zoom webinar, you don't have the little video. Um, there won't be lots of faces. It's going to be a communication this way, okay? And you will have a packet of materials. I will occasionally share my screen, but basically it's, it's me, my instruments, this whiteboard, your packet, and a slideshow. And uh, you'll receive a, a lot of uh, extra goodies after we're finished. And I forgot to mention one, I think two people will be chosen. Yeah, two people will be chosen to receive a, uh, will win a private lesson with me. So you win a half hour private lesson with me just for showing up. I'll just choose two people at random and you can record that lesson and we can cover whatever you want, whatever you want. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate that. Thank you for your support. Billy Shears, John Furr is giving us a good answer to the Billy Shears mystery. John Furr, thank you for this. Billy Shears was suggested by conspiracy theorists to be a Paul McCartney lookalike. And had he, re he had replaced Paul as he had been killed in a crash. Ringo threw the lyric in as a kick at the conspiracy theorists. I see, that's why. So back in the day, Billy Shears, Beatles fans would have known, oh, this is the guy who supposedly replaced John, uh, Paul. That's cool to know, John. I never knew that. With a little help from my friends, would be a great jam song, Andre. Yeah, we can get into that. Wonderful uh, chord progression. Can I review the transition, Nan? Which transition? Thank you, Maddie. You're so sweet. Merci beaucoup. All right, so um, let me know what transition um, and, oh, the transition into Little Help from My Friends. Is that what you mean? Yeah. So Little Help from My Friends is in the key of E, and uh, it's not the easiest on ukulele, so I, if I teach you the song Little Help from My Friends, we'll probably do it in a little friendlier key. Maybe not. Um, but the transition is Billy. Shears. What you're doing is you're taking your C major shape. And right now when you're playing a open strings, the nut is doing the fretting right there. So it's like you have an invisible finger. Right? So if you can imagine moving this whole shape up with your pinky, one fret, two fret, now this is your D major bar chord because you've moved the C major chord up a whole step. And then this moves up two more frets to E. So it's a bar chord at the second fret, a bar chord at the fourth fret. And I mentioned that stuff about the C chord and the open strings to make it clear to you that this is the same voicing. Same voicing of the chord. The way the harmony is stacked, the way the voicing is, it's exactly the same. Ooh, what would you do if I sang out of tune? Would you stand up and walk out on me? Lend me your ears and I'll sing you a song. I'll try not to sing out of key. Get by with a little help from my friend. All right, we'll do that someday. <laughs> can't overdose on the Beatles, right? Uh, Jack, thank you. Alma, thank you for those super chats. I appreciate it. If there are no other questions, how about we transition into our mindfulness meditation before, if you're going to leave, don't go yet because you can take this lick and really turn it into a meditation in a way you play. Listen carefully. You can take bits of the lick and recycle them in different ways. 
take that shape and you know it's going to work over an A7 or A minor chord. So my point is that you can take the vocabulary that we learned in this song and use it as a building block for your own ideas. Of course, at first it's good to apply it directly to the song, you know, directly to the context that you're using it in and you understand how to play it. But it's not long before these little fretboard roadmaps, you start to build, you know, you start to build some inroads into the uncharted territory of the neck and you start to understand oh those notes work with that chord all right thank you very much david for your support martin thank you suzanne oh yeah in the key of g maybe we'll do it that way that would be a bit easier in the key of g suzanne thanks for that suggestion all right let's um switch into a, a different mode. Please check the links down below if you would like uh, to attend the workshop that I'm offering. And if you found this valuable and you enjoyed your time, do me a huge favor. Big support is just to click the like button. You could go visit any of my videos and click the like button. It really helps YouTubers out. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I'll get back to you eventually. Um, let us uh, begin with our mindfulness meditation. And for this, know that um, mindfulness and meditation is not something we do correctly or incorrectly. We are cultivating, we are practicing bringing our attention into the present moment. And a powerful way to practice is to listen deeply listening deeply to your instrument. And this bell that I'm going to share with you is a wonderful means of listening diff uh, deeply. Thank you, Troy. I'm going to take a quick sip of water and say hello and thank you one more time. Thank you, David. Glad you enjoyed this. And last week's, so I'll be here every week with the exception of the 21st. There's a link down below if you're interested in that. So my friends, let's just spend a few minutes listening deeply. Let's bring our feet to the floor. You, If you have a meditation cushion, please feel free to sit upright on it. You can lay down and relax yourself. And let's take a little break from the input that I've been sharing with you and the input from the world and from our mind stream. And let's just watch the mind stream. It will begin to settle the more we bring a loving awareness to it. I'm going to ring this bell three times and invite you to listen closely and just bring your attention to your breathing and your listening. Coming home to the present moment. 
Just bring a gentle awareness to your breathing, the rise and fall of your belly, wherever you notice the breath, entering your nostrils, maybe you feel it at the back of the throat, begin to soften your shoulders and your scalp and your jaw, inviting you to close your eyes and just for these few minutes, bring your attention to the present moment, your breathing and your listening. I'd like to invite you to remain connected to your breath and in a moment we will return to our ukuleles but for now listen closely to the bell and whatever sounds are in your room allow them to be there See if you can detect the different qualities of the tone. There's a low, a mid, a high range of sounds. And just be with them as you breathe and listen. bringing your natural curiosity to what you're hearing. Listen to the next bell 
until there is nothing left of the sound and all that's left is your witnessing presence listening to all the different sounds that emerge from this bell Well, let's hold this space. Just continue to breathe. And I'd like to invite you to slowly, very slowly, move towards your instrument, almost as if it's a slow motion ballet. Picking it up, noticing the weight of your instrument the texture slowly putting it on if you wear a strap and i will demonstrate something to you very briefly, and then I'd like to invite you to do the same, and that would be to use your instrument the same way that we're using a singing bowl. Play one note with as little effort as possible. It could be an open string. It could be any note along the neck. You may choose to rub the wood or scrape the strings or tap or any sound you want to make. The game is to be 100% present with your sound and your mantra is one of acceptance, of total acceptance. Whatever you do, you say yes to it. And I'm going to play five notes and then I will invite you to do the same. Let me change that. I'm going to play three notes and then I'll invite you to do the same, okay? So we're sustaining our attention for three notes. Here I go with no expectations, no plans, just practicing deep listening. Your turn. Yes. 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 Now, play three notes, listening closely to them. You could stay with that step for a long, wonderful, happy time, relaxing time. Now sing back what you play. So I will demonstrate. Your turn. Yes. Now don't concern yourself with whether your voice is able to mimic what you play. It's just the intention of receiving it back that's important. You can expand this now into some rhythm. Bum, 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 bum. 
And when you find something that lights you up, repeat it. Let's play this game for one minute. Are you ready? You can choose one note, two notes, three notes. Your groove can be just one note. Ready? Let's play. Play with me. It doesn't have to make sense. We're just listening to whatever comes out right now. Deeply listening. Just being with our sound. and let's find a fade out get softer and softer softer and softer and when there's almost no more sound play it one more time in your mind visualize it hear it Yes. So thank you for playing with me. This is a game that I like to play, and there are many variations and many ways to play it. After spending some time in mindfulness, I will go to my instrument and play whatever comes out. I'm not thinking about scales or harmony, although that's another way to play. You could stay within the blueprint of a particular scale or harmony and we can do that and we will in future lessons but just to be completely free and allow what comes out this is what Bobby McFerrin called you know improvisation he said improvisation is the courage to move from one note to the next and the more you do this the more you will trust the less we will criticize what comes out. The more we accept, the more the channel opens until our ideas flow. All right, we're strengthening that connection. So I encourage you to do this. I know it's very different than what typical instrumental practice is, especially on a ukulele where we are typically learning songs and other people's music. I want to present this as a way of bringing, um, honoring your own intuitive, creative wisdom, which you have a lot of, you are already a very creative being, and to start to play with this idea. You may find that when you play five notes meditatively, play them with a little rhythm, change them any way you want, you'll come up with stuff. You'll come up with something so cool, you may want to record it and save it for later, you know? Record it, not for anybody else to hear it. Just record it so you can hear it. And it's amazing what, ha what opens up in us when we are not concerned with anybody else hearing it. You know? So I wish you a lot of fun with this improvisation exercise. Whatever comes out, let it come. See?
So I'm going to end this lesson. I don't mean to talk too long about this, but did you notice what happened there? Watch it again. I intended to land on the bottom notes of a G chord. I was here. But instead of, I said yes. And this is just a knee-jerk reaction I have because I've trained in it. And all of a sudden, because I said yes, this little kind of heavy metal-ish, or whatever you want to call it, tribal sounding uh, groove came out. And then information started to pour out where, oh, I'm close to the G scale. The pentatonic scale that I have internalized and that training just starts to show up. So that's improvisation. It's quite wonderful process and I would love to share more about it with you learning the vocabulary is a bit of that's training the vessel your scales your knowledge of harmony but it really starts and it ends with playing a sound and just saying yes to it okay so my friends thank you very much for joining me for Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. I had a great time being with you. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Sometime through the day today, I hope you'll pick up your ukulele, practice mindfulness with your ukulele or with any sound. Pausing in our day to return home to the present moment is a, is a wonderful thing that we can all do. We all have an intuitive wisdom that wants to come home to the present moment and be at peace. So I wish you much peace, many blessings to you and your family. Thank you. Mahalo. Mahalo. We have some wonderful uh, chats and emojis coming in. Thank you all so much. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy your jamming, enjoy your music, and look forward to seeing you next week. And if you're interested in any of my other offerings, there's links down below with some information about them. Stay safe and healthy, everybody. Wishing you and your family all the best. Thank you very much and I look forward to seeing you in another live stream soon. Take good care everybody. All the best. <laughs>